So welcome to the first in our series of lectures on physical examination. In this one we'll just focus on principles of examination. So the principles of examining your patients are first and foremost to get a rapport with them, so to get them to start trusting you and also to show them that you care about them. Um, very important to exclude red flags. Uh, we generally don't see a lot of red flags because these patients have been assessed by multiple other specialists before they get to us. Nevertheless, it's important to keep it in the back of your mind, or should I say keep it in the forefront of your mind when you, when you do your first physical examination. You're also going to try and find out where the pain is coming from and, if, and also get a sense of the mechanisms of pain as well. Now, of course, with your physical examination, you want to assess the pain behaviors, your patient's affect, um, and also uh, get an understanding of any associated diseases that may change your treatment, your treatment plan, uh, or any further multidisciplinary management that you have for your patient. These are the difficulties of your physical examination to try and differentiate nociceptive from neuropathic pain. And in our topic on neuropathic pain, you'll understand that um, neuropathic pain is difficult to diagnose, it changes, uh, it's different in different people, um, so it's quite a tricky one. Then you're also going to want to interpret the sensory phenomena that you pick up and try and relate it to the anatomy of pain, the mechanisms of pain. You're also going to assess that part of the body and define whether it's um, uh, how well it's functioning and you're going to attempt to differentiate impairment from disability which we've discussed previously. Now these are the principles and you'll get this in most clinical textbooks. One of the main things that I've taken away from examining patients in pain is that on your initial inspection when you inspect your sides, you look at your patient moving you're going to want to get your patient to move for you first. So if it's a leg, if it's an arm, get them to move the arm first before you get onto the movement section and before you passively move the arm. Uh, this is because uh, you, the patients are going to be in pain and you, what, you, what you don't want to do is break that rapport that you're developing by getting your hands on the patients and um, jerking their painful arm all around. So get them to move first as part of your inspection to get a feel for how, how much pain they're actually in. Palpation is simple palpation that we know. Musculoskeletal, so examine the joints, examine the bones, and then move on to the muscles and soft tissue. And of course, if you're doing this for an exam, always consider whether you need to examine the blood pressure, the pulses, and those kinds of things. Now you're going to move on to moving, and moving you're going to start off with your passive movement of patients and then move on to the active or power resisted movements of patients. So the passive movement, you really want to define the range of movement of that joint body part that you're interested in. If it's painful when it moves, there's probably some dynamic mechanical allodynia. And tone I've put down there for completeness sake, but it doesn't form part of most of our examinations. When you touch your patients, you've got an idea about their tone anyway. Uh, as you can see, there's an x-ray there to remind us that one of the commonest things you're going to find when you examine joints, particularly in elderly people, is uh, osteoarthritis. They're painful, they've got a reduced range of movement, there could be some crepitus, which is quite common in, in OA, and of course there's a, there's a tender joint line, so it's tender to the touch. And the x-ray features are, are classical, as you can see there. There's narrowing of the joint space, there's subchondral osteosclerosis, there's subchondral cysts that you can see forming on the lateral aspect and um, the osteophytes. So those are the findings of osteoarthritis. Then you're going to move on to your active, your power resisted um, uh, part of your movement examination. And this is exactly what we've learned in medical school. You want to define the power. Most of our patients are going to have good power. Their power will seem weak because of pain. So pain can lead to a type of weakness, but it's not a true uh, neurological weakness. And that's important for you to differentiate the two. And I've also included um, a flow diagram of weakness, uh, of weakness or numbness in extremities. And this is from one of the neurology textbooks I used. Um, now, the neuropathic aspect, you'll see that's distal weakness with sensory change is truly neuropathic in nature. We may not have weakness, but nevertheless, that's an approach to examining patients that are weak. 
So now let's, let's move on and look at movement in slightly more detail, starting with the upper limbs. And you're going to want to do a screener. So every textbook you read will give you a different dermatome and a different myotome for checking muscle power. This is a combination of my reading as well as the um, uh, college, the Australian faculty uh, Pope examination. C5, elbow flexion, easy. C6, wrist extension. C7 are the elbow uh, extensors, so the triceps. Finger flexors are C8, and finger abductors are T1. So just in 10, 20 seconds, you've assessed your screeners for your upper limb power. Now let's move on to the lower limb. Um, while your patient is standing in front of you, you can do a couple of things just to get a brief overview of power. You can get them to squat and stand. Um, and this you're assessing proximal muscle, muscle uh, power, so the L3-4 mitomes. Getting them to walk on their heels, you're assessing the L4-5, and we'll come to that later. Uh, and then standing and do some, doing toe walking, you're assessing the S1. So hip flexors, L2. Knee extensors are the L3. Um, I don't really check knee flexion. Um, and that is essentially is L5, but L, L2, L3, L4, ankle dorsiflexion, the big toe extension is L5, and then S1 is ankle plantar flexion. So a nice simple way of remembering and, and really um, flying through your lower limb screeners for power. Now let's move on to provocation tests. I've got them in brackets because they may or may not be useful in, in your physical examination. I, f I do find it useful in my physical examination, particularly of the lower limb. And uh, the, 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 the tests that I use for lower limb are essentially the Kemp test. So you, you um, um, forcibly load the lumbar facets. And this can be useful in supporting a diagnosis. It's not going to make the diagnosis. It's going to support the diagnosis of possible facet joint arthropathy. Faber's test, flexion, abduction, external rotation of the, of the hip joint to assess for upper buttock pain, and that might represent sacroiliac joint pain. Um, the PACE test, I don't really do. That's when you get your patient sitting and you do um, resisted abduction and external rotation to assess for piriformis muscle um, pathology. Um, and, of course, the one that we do for, for and foremost for our lower limb examination is the straight leg raise test, which is a provocation test, isn't it? Uh, so that's the lower limb. And then the upper limb, I might choose to do Sperling's test, which we'll get on to at a later point. Now, the reflexes are standard reflexes, just like you do in your, um, your medical school days or your, your uh, physician days. Coordination is generally doesn't form part of a pain specialist examination. However, I advise you to do it, uh, consider it in all of your patients, particularly those that are on a, on a concoction of medication, alcohol, drugs, opioids, benzodiazepines. If you assess coordination, you'll be amazed at what you can find and the lack thereof. And then sensation is the thing that we really want to get to quickly, but we've got to work through everything else before we get on to sensation. Sensation, you're looking to assess your A-beta fibers, so your large touch fibers. Um, of course, the A-delta and C small fibers, so we're assessing for pain. And then you might choose to check the dorsal columns as well. So the light touch, the A-beta fibers, you're assessing light touch, you're assessing brush strokes. So the light touch, you're looking for static mechanical allodynia, and you're going to take a wisp of cotton wool and dab it onto, the pa onto your patient. You're not going to brush it, you're not going to brush it, you're just going to dab it. Um, and then using your brush, you're going to look for dynamic tactile allodynia, which we'll get to and show you about. But again, little brush, brush it up and down to see what happens. You're looking for hypo and hyperesthetic phenomena. Pinprick hyperalgesia, you're looking for A delta and C fibers. You're assessing A delta and C fibers. And the same thing for temperature. Now, if you're using warm or cool um, rollers, say, for example, you're assessing uh, allodynia. But when you're using hot and cold, it's already painful. So you're assessing for hyperalgesia there. And proprioception, again, included for completeness sake, not always useful. Now, we've all got our uh, pictures of dermatomes in our minds. And the aim of this really is to make it as simple, as simple as it 
uh, as possible for you when you're examining your patients. And what I use is the American Spinal Injury Association little dermatome map. It's really simple and I advise you to go to the internet, go to the, um, its website, download one of these uh, forms and use that to get your dermatomes. If you have a look, it's really easy. So at the lateral aspects of the clavicle, you've got C4, C5, upper outer aspect of the arm, C6, lower outer aspect of the, of the arm, C7 is the middle finger, C8 is the inner aspect of the palm, so the hand, uh, T1 is the inner aspect of the lower arm, and then T2 is the upper inner aspect of the arm. So really simple to examine the dermatomes of the upper limb. And the same thing for the dermatomes of the lower limb. L2, above the knee. L3, knee. L4, medial aspect. L5, um, mid aspect going on to the, the, the top of the foot and the big toe. And then S1, lateral aspect. So keep it simple. So that concludes the principles of the physical examination.